Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist DT from WX Risk, the commander of chaos, Colonel Confucian, and the captain of catastrophe. It's time to talk about Dorian and uh, what it's going to do here for Florida. Things are getting really tense as it continues to slowly age towards the Florida coast. Um, this video is coming out later than I wanted to, but there's just so much information out there. It takes so much time to do these videos and organize the thought. All right, there's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia. In case you do not know, there I am. And uh, there's the email and the uh, Twitter page and the Facebook page. All right, now we'll start out with the topics here, obviously, Dorian. And I'm seeing this a lot on the Facebook pages and on Twitter pages. They, meteorologists, have no idea what's going to happen. This has got a mind of its own. It can do anything. Uh, oh, crapshoot. Uh, they're all guessing. No. That's not correct. It just isn't. I mean, think about this for a second. We have a Category 5 hurricane 200 miles off the Florida coast, and they have not issued hurricane warnings for the big cities or in central Florida. That's how good the model forecasting is. That's how confident the National Hurricane Center is. This is one of the great achievements in modern science when it comes to catastrophes like this and the ability of the models and forecasters to see this and have a confidence in the data. And I really think, you know, a lot of people don't understand and appreciate how great this is. All right, the average person um, not only uh, has only just started paying attention to, to Dorian in the last two days. That doesn't mean no one else has, okay? Just because you, as the average person, just started paying attention to this two days ago, that's fine. You're just a weather hobbyist, you're not a meteorologist. The rest of us have been paying attention to this for a long time. So first, keep that in mind, okay? Uh, the rapid intensification was forecasted by me, Weather Risk, and by many other meteorologists days ago. This is not a surprise. The slow due west track, again, not a surprise. I know you want to, may think it's a surprise. I know some of you are gleefully, you know, hopefuling that this means that some disaster is going to happen with the weather models. No, it doesn't mean that. Okay, we talked about this last Tuesday in the video, the one on Thursday, the one on Saturday, and many others have talked about it as well, not just me. This westward track is not a surprise. The coming stall of Dorian, which is supposed to occur on Monday, not tonight. So again, I see a lot of posts out there on Twitter, it's not stalling, it's, it's not supposed to stall now. It's supposed to stall on Monday. I'm sorry, that's what the data's been showing for days. It's not a surprise. It's not, nothing's wrong here. It's not different. Okay, and so again, in point number five, the stall was predicted days ago, as is the turn to the north. Not a surprise. It just isn't. All right. Uh, like I said last night, I posted this here on the Twitter page, on the Facebook page last night around 10 o'clock, and I got a lot of uh, guff for it, as you can see. Um, you know, um, Dorian reached Category 5, winds were 170 miles an hour. I posted the actual data. Um, a lot of people said no. They checked, of course, the, the CNN. They checked the Weather Channel. They checked AccuWeather. And at 11 o'clock, the Hurricane Center had not upgraded. Now, this was the actual raw data. And again, one of the things, the reason I do this is to instruct you how the meteorology works. But the decision to upgrade comes from the Hurricane Center. And one of the criteria is the winds and the pressure. Now, the pressure has to be around 920 or 925 millibars and the winds of 157 miles per hour at the surface or higher. In this case, uh, as you can see, the winds were quite high to the surface. And you can see here, uh, we have several ways of measuring the winds. We use drop sounds where they drop a buoy from the plane that goes through the clouds down to the ground. And the other one is the radar from the plane. And we can see here, this is the surface wind, SFMR. All right. And look at the peak here, there and here, 155 knots, 175 miles an hour, which is what I said, 170 miles an hour. And, of course, uh, the pressure was down to 934 millibars, which is not low enough for a Category 5 hurricane. So for that reason, the Hurricane Center had not upgraded, but the data was real. So, um, you know, now there's controversy in the weather business about whether or not, you know, you have to have the pressure that low in order to get a Category 5. You know, if it's 928, is it Category 4, is it 5, and that sort of stuff. So this was not quite low enough and that's why they didn't upgrade it that's my point here i'm trying to get through here okay 
This was the discussion from 11 o'clock last night. Again, to point at the point, the area in red. There has been some higher surface winds. This is from last night from the SFMR, like I showed here. Okay, but these data are questionable based upon our experience of very high SFMR measured wind speeds in the recent strong hurricanes that did not match the standard flight level wind reductions. So for that reason, they decided not to go bang it at 11 o'clock last night. But at 11 o'clock this morning, when they upgraded it, notice it says here in blue, the NOAA plane reported peak flight level winds of 159 knots, while the SFMR from both planes measured winds between 155 and 170 knots. Okay, so now they're using the, F, the SFMR. Before uh, last night, they weren't. A little confusing, I know, but you know, what, that's, that's how they changed their mind. And the other reason they changed their mind is, of course, they had a drop sound from the plane, which measured a gust of 176 knots, which is almost 200 miles per hour at the surface. So as for all that, they banged it up to a Category 5. Okay, they could have done it last night, but they held it off till this morning. No big deal. Right, this was the, uh, but I just want to show you the reasoning there. This was the five o'clock advisory from the hurricane. You can see the track here as it goes right over Hatteras, right there. You can see that, uh, as you can see, it stays off the coast, very close to Florida, but it goes over Hatteras, which is right about here. All right, so that was the five o'clock advisory, and this is the 11 p.m. Not much is different. You can see again, very close to Hatteras. Um, and pretty close to the Florida coast, and then close to uh, a Wilmington and Moorhead City and Hatteras. So there you go. Uh, that's 11 o'clock advisory, still a Category 5. Look at this monster storm. Very impressive here. Look at this. I mean, it's now been a Category 5 hurricane for, I don't know. Um, well, you go back to 11, to 11 o'clock last night, you can make the case it's been almost Category 5 now for 24 hours. But it's very impressive. It shows, you know, amazing... The way our temperatures are just, we, as meteorologists, we're flabbergasted. I mean, this is just so unbelievably perfect, so close to Florida. It's just, and the thing is, it's it, it's the damage doing. You know, this island here is the Grand Bahama Island. If you haven't been down there, that's where a lot of the resorts are, on the Grand Bahama Island right here. Let me see if I can call it if you can see it. A lot of the resorts are right there. They're just going to get wiped. I mean, just hammered. As this thing is just, is just been doing damage and damage and damage and will continue this was a picture earlier which was from twitter passed all around the weather community this is what it looks like coming out of in the eye looking out the one of the windows for the recon plane look at the stadium effect of the eye it looks like a giant baseball stadium there's the sun in the middle of it i'm just absolutely perfect picture just uh, unbelievable the laws of physics and science just it just stuns you how amazing it all is this here is a good picture of the central dense overcast and the water vapor you can see. It's just a monster storm. No weakening on the western side of it at all or the southern side of it. It's just perfectly symmetrical in every possible way. Now here is a very nice radar from, I guess this is from 10 o'clock or 11, 1030 on Sunday night. You can see this is, of course, this is Grand Bahama Island. This whole thing is, let me call it the marker so you can make it out here. This is Grand Bahama Island here. See it? There you go. Actually, you know, it goes here, but anyway. And that's Freeport. That's the big airport here. So this thing is going right across Grand Bahama Island. Just, uh, just a catastrophe. Mm -mm -mm. Right, this here is the uh, rate of reconnaissance from this morning. A 928 down to 921 millibars. The lowest reading they found this afternoon got down to 911 millibars. So it's, I think, the second strongest Atlantic hurricane on record at this point. And then here is 916, 914. You can still see how amazingly, this is one from this evening. This is as of 1030. And you can see how amazingly powerful the hurricane remains. And it appears to be getting close to Florida. So there's a lot of talk concerned about that. Now, this is what, this is the issue here from the winds, from the hurricane, from the National Weather Service, how they're forecasting the winds to be as it turns over the next uh, couple of days. And you can see that, you know, it has, these very high winds just offshore. You can see it all right here. You can see these high winds right offshore. And they just get on the coastal areas. But as soon as you go inland, the winds drop off dramatically. I mean, you know, Lando gets winds of 25 miles an hour. It's just... So, obviously, the key here is, is, is the turning point. Now, even though this is impressive, I want to point out that uh, as size hurricanes go, this is not a very large hurricane. I mean, it looks huge on the satellite picture, but you compare it to other hurricanes of this size, it's not very, very big. It's not as big as, let's say, Harvey or Irma or anything, or Maria, those storms like that. It's a middle-sized hurricane. It's not particularly large. 
but again you can see the problem here if this shifts 50 miles to the west you have totally different winds on the coast i mean the this is such a tight forecast so i know why a lot of people are nervous and i am too i made it very clear that i've been concerned for days about whether it's going to make a turn that sharp and could it drift a little closer to the coast but you know i'm sticking with the forecast because the data shows it so let's look at this now this is the british model here now this is for tomorrow morning there it is stuck over grand bahama island okay we, we just talked about that here remember we, this is the island here so this is the british this is the british model tomorrow morning it's still there so this says that tomorrow morning it's going to stall over the grand bahama island okay now that's when the stall starts now this is tuesday morning it's still over grand bahama island now the pressure i know the pressure is not nearly low enough but the point is, is that it's still there that's the stall so we'll see if that actually happens now could it drift closer to west palm beach before it stalls hell yeah it could go another 50 miles close to the coast i'm not ruling that out that's a real possibility okay then um this is the british model now by 60 hours which is tuesday night now the thing is beginning to move north you see that turn to the north here it comes and then if we look at the other the British models there it is on Wednesday night and there it is on Thursday night and Friday morning going right over Hatteras just offshore of Wilmington and Moorhead City and over Hatteras but boom 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 hitting all three points now this here is the European model and again tomorrow morning look where it is right over that Grand Bahama Island right in this thing right here that's Grand Bahama Island sea has not moved that's when the stall takes place not tonight tomorrow morning okay this is, um, let me go here. Now, this is uh, 2 o'clock Tuesday morning. It's still there. Hasn't moved. Okay. And this is finally Tuesday evening. It's beginning to move to the north finally. So that's when the stall. The stall is tomorrow. From early tomorrow morning until early uh, uh, Tuesday morning. That's the stall. All right. And then, um, now, what that means is, what this means is that, now, this is the 12Z gfs model and um, as you can see um, the gfs uh, takes the hurricane because it drifts closer to the coast over wilmington west of hatteras so let me call up my mark as you can see it here so this over here is wilmington and this is moorhead city and this is hatteras okay there, this is um, obviously category one or two hurricane over the Albemarle and Palmuckle Sounds, and then it goes like this. So this would be bad news for Virginia Beach and maybe portions of Chesapeake and Suffolk. Uh, excuse me, just Virginia Beach and Sandbridge, and then Nags Head, uh, Elizabeth City. This would be a bad hit. The thing is, if you look at the ensembles, most of these ensembles are this. This here, Satiris, are way south of that. You see that? They're like this. Okay. So this makes me think. Well, the operational run is doing that, but eh, the ensembles are not. So maybe it's not going to do that. Okay. But then here come the um, 18Z ensembles, and look what they did. Clearly, look at this here. I call my marker. Look at this here, right? Look how close they are to the coast. Look at this, right? Now, here is the 18Z, much closer to the coast. It has shifted close to the coast because the track is closer to the coast, no doubt about it. This is the, uh, um, this was the uh, uh, European ensemble, as you can see. It's also right over Hatteras, as you can see that, go right along the coast. Um, notice that all these lines are right on the coast. Very few of them go in, in past Charleston or Moorhead City or Fayetteville. You don't see any of that. They're right on the coast. And just to give you an enlargement of it, um, this was the early morning European. So this was Sunday morning. And you can see again, um, there's Hatteras. You can see most of this you know, is off the coast. You see how it's off the coast here? Okay, that's fine. And then if we look at the updated version of that from this afternoon, much tighter. There it is this morning. Hey, I want you to pay attention to this area right here. Okay, now look at that. Now watch this. Much tighter, you see that? And it's closer to Hatteras. Much closer to Hatteras. So they definitely trending that way as well. And as a result, this is the European winds because of this track over the next five and a half days. You have 105 mile an hour winds in Hatteras over 100 miles an hour in Moorhead City and the Albemarle Sound. You have winds to 65 miles an hour in Virginia Beach and Sandbridge, winds to 40 in Richmond and 45 in Salisbury, uh, 55 in Newport News. And, but notice again, as soon as you go inland, 
the winds really drop off here. Nothing going on here at all. So this, if this happens, it's just going to be a coastal event, folks. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this here is the European model again. We showed you this, and you can see it's it stalls there, and it you can see it shifting so and so forth. So um, now, how certain are we of this going to happen? I mean, how do we know? Is it possible we could be? This is what's going on. So let me explain to you what the science behind the turn to the north is. This piece of energy right here, see this weakness? This is a piece of energy. This is a little short wave, what we call a short wave in the weather business. And it's got a little disturbance, that orange piece here. There's the hurricane. So what this is going to do, this is now Sunday night. This is going to cause a weakness to develop here. And this is the GFS model. And there it is. You can see from here, look at the piece over Kentucky. And now look where it does. It drops down to Virginia, North Carolina. See that? So it was over here. Now it drops over here. That creates a weakness. And what happens is that weakness uh, now results in this. This is now Monday night, early Tuesday morning. We now have a whole, the whole pattern has just changed here. This piece of energy has now linked up here. We've got a weakness in the atmosphere. You see the weakness here. So we were like this before. Okay, now we're here. And this there and there. And now it begins to pull it to the north. Now the next disturbance is this feature here. And that's coming this way. And it should kick the hurricane off the coast at some point. That's the argument. But as you can see, the GFS is slow doing that because this feature is much weaker. Right here, this piece of energy is much weaker. So now it goes over to Hatteras and Wilmington, very close to that. You can see that. Now the European model is very, very similar. There's a piece of energy right here comes through tomorrow morning there it is right there and creates a weakness to pull the hurricane north all right so far so good just like the gfs and then you can see it becomes um gets close gets pulled to the carolina coast and then there's the next piece of energy coming in very quickly right here see that piece of energy that's going to bend the hurricane and force it to go this direction and sure enough that's exactly what happens there you go so now this piece of energy is still in the Pacific Ocean, so the models are guessing how strong this is or isn't. We don't know how big, how strong this piece of energy is here. That's kind of a guess. So that's that's a complicating factor. All right. In summary, the Dorian stall is supposed to happen Monday all day, not tonight. The fact that it's still moving west at four miles an hour, not a surprise. The slight west shift means Dorian has a much higher chance of impacting the coastal areas of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and you know, especially east of North Carolina. That, that second piece of energy in northern jet stream to the model showing, that's a guess. This piece of energy I just talked about here. This piece of energy is a guess. That's still in the Pacific Ocean. We don't know what that's going to look like. So we'll see. Okay? We, we don't know. And finally, Dorian hugging the coast will cause, if it does this track, if it takes this track where it hugs the coast like this, I'll show what I mean here. If it does this sort of track, all right, the hurricane is going to be pulling in dry air from the middle of the U.S., from the dry air in Kentucky and Tennessee. So the hurricane will be here, let's say, right? It's got this huge circulation will be in training dry air, in training dry air. Even though it's over the Gulf Stream, it's going to be training dry air. So that's going to cause the hurricane to weaken, and the western side of the hurricane is going to collapse. And that's why your winds are not going to be that significant just to the eye of the western side of the hurricane. Look how fast the winds drop off because the models are saying that you're going to be pulling in dry air from the north over the land, much more friction. So your winds inland are going to be much, much less than on the coast, even if it hugs the coast. But again, you are going to pull in dry air as it comes north, and that's going to cause significant weakening. And I want to make sure you guys were knew that was going to happen. As it comes north up the coast here, up the northeast coast, you're going to see some of that. And that's going to help a lot in terms of how much impact the damage the east of North Carolina might see Virginia Beach, what have you, Wilmington, Moorhead City. Um, obviously, if you're in the bays, if you're in the uh, Albemarle Sound, the Palmolive Sound, the Outer Banks, you could take a serious hit here. But just inland, the weakening is going to be, as it comes up, is going to be quite significant, especially since it's not a very fast-moving hurricane. This is a meteorologist DT from WX Risk. Uh, this is the last update for the evening and on, uh, in terms of videos, and I'll have another one uh, tomorrow morning or late morning. I'll, I'll talk to you soon.